everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today we are getting into a long awaited video and that is comparing the five main modern recorders on the market. Finally! I'm here at the UK Recorder Summer School in Yorkshire, UK and I'm joined by the Early Music Shop. This month is Recorder 31, a new video every day throughout the month and they have kindly lent me the recorders to compare in this video. Oh god, I have been waiting so long to make this and I'm very excited. And there's something very important. I am not going to rank them. I'm not going to say which is my favourite. Why? These are all fantastic instruments and I heartily recommend them all. So that's why I don't want to say this one's better than this one because they're not, they're just different. All right, let's go. So to give you a baseline, I'm just going to play you a little bit on my normal alto. This is a beautiful instrument handmade by Yoav Ran, but this is what you would call a normal recorder. Let's refer back to that from time to time, shall we? First up is the Merck Erlet Alto. This is a collaboration between Ralph Erlet and Merck. And you may remember I actually have a Merck Erlet tenor. More on that up here. such a beautiful sound. I feel like it would blend really nicely in a more baroque or classical setting, but it's got this vibrance, this brightness that would also make it nice for use in modern ensemble works. Let's compare it to my normal alto. I can imagine using this for a concerto with an orchestra, for example. <laughs> if you've got an orchestra, write to me. I'll come and play this. So this is the Mollenhauer Modern. I actually own one of these, though this isn't mine. low E foot as well. So the Merck and the Mollenhauer feel and look quite like a regular recorder. It's not too much of a step to start playing these. At Mollenhauer they explained that these recorders are harmonic. The way that you overblow gives pure octaves and intervals. And that's something different than a Baroque recorder. These are made for use with modern instruments and my own Mollenhauer Modern, I've played in ensemble with double bass and clarinet and violin and it fits beautifully. Now something quite different is the Adriana Brokink Eagle and so that you know this eagle is my own out of the ones I'm playing today it's the only one that I own. As you can see it looks very different, it's much wider much fatter, it's got a wider bore, and yes, it does feel heavier in my hands. It is much louder. Yes, we've got a key for the low E over here, more on keys later. You can hear everything about the Eagles in the video I made with Adri. She was a wonderful maker who sadly passed away last year. She explained that she made the bore so wide 
so that the fundamental tones coming out of the instrument could blend with modern instruments. So she's made this to be used with modern instruments in front of an orchestra, even with a band. Following on to the Kung E3, and you can see that it's very comparable to the Eagle. Kung recorders anyway have this big sound, you can give it a lot of air, and this fits there as well. And now for something completely different, we have the Helder Evo Alto. You may remember my video with Susie Fröhlich, who did her whole PhD doctorate on these instruments and helped to develop them. Oh, let me just play it for you. On the spectrum from normal recorder to something out there, this is definitely on the far edge. It has a lot of special innovations, extra keys, a really long, quite relatively thin bore. We've got a movable block. So the possibilities for sound colors on the Helder instruments are infinite, but it is going to take you more time to get into than with a more straightforward model like the Merck or Mollenhauer. And just to compare with a Baroque recorder, now that you've met them all, let's do some comparisons. First up, sound in the low register, Baroque recorder. Merck. Mollenhauer. All five of the recorders have gone for a louder, more resonant sound in the low notes than you would get with a Baroque recorder. Time for some Bach! <laughs> Too much? <laughs> high register! Referring back to our Baroque recorder, our high register is typically louder than the low register. And we might have to close the end to get those high notes. Let's have a look at the mic. Beautiful, easy response. That means the high notes are easy to play. You can get most of the fingerings in the third octave 
without closing the end. That's very nice. Mollenhauer modern. I hope my tiny travel mic is surviving this. I can get the entire third octave without closing the end at all. What I do notice with these recorders that have keys for number seven is that we're a bit less flexible with that high G fingering. Eagle! It's so loud. It's great. I love it. It's so loud. Again, you can use the keys to get the entire third octave without closing the end of the recorder with your knee. I'm in quite a small room with quite a small microphone. That's why I'm not playing all of those really high notes, but they're there. Kungi three. I'm having to get used to the somehow. I really have to dare to blow that hard. When those notes come out, they are huge and they are beautiful. But if you're playing one of these, you're going to have to get used to blowing and daring to blow. Hold on. So something about the Helder is that you have a movable block. The back, if you imagine where you put that lip, that's a block of wood that moves in and out. This means you can change the dynamics. So you can play soft and high. I know that the Helder has a really, really wide range. It can go much higher in pitch than I'm playing now. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I don't know all of these fingerings yet because this is an instrument that takes time to get into. But you can play high and soft. So let's go to my next topic, which is dynamics. The Merc is giving me a lot of room to change the dynamics and the resonance with my breath, yet it still gives a really beautiful sound. I feel like it would be fine to use this amongst other instruments and other regular recorders. I'm not sure if this could stand up in front of a drum kit. Let's move to the Mollenhauer, shall we? With these instruments, you can change your breath and it doesn't affect the tuning as much as it would on a Baroque recorder. I also love that with the keys, you can play traditionally soft notes, like the low F sharp, loud. <laughs> I tell you, when I first got these instruments, I was just walking around the house going Eagle! One of Adriana's main innovations with this recorder is the metal labium. That's this part here and it's what creates the sound. She told me that she used metal because you can shape it a lot thinner with precision and according to her, in terms of physics, it means you can play dynamics. Don't ask me how it works, but it sounds like this. I'm doing decrescendos. I'm doing crescendos with my breath. And as a recorder player, oh, that feels like a luxury. Over to the Kung, I'm seeing a metal labium here. So I'm assuming it's following the same principles. Let's hear it. you can get this huge range of dynamics and I really like the sound of this recorder and the Helder. Oh, so remember our movable block? If I push that in with my lip, what it's doing is closing the windway and that enables me to play softer. Let's give it a go.
the potential feels huge. Dynamic range, tick, 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 tick. Let's talk about keys. All five of these recorders have keys for your right pinky finger. Those are down to the lowest two semitones of the recorder. The Merc has a double key for the F and the F sharp. The Mollenhauer has the double key F, F sharp, and it also has an extra roll to go down to the low E. So you're doing all three of those notes, E, F, F sharp, with the same finger. It's very, very easy to move between the three, but if you're coming down from a jump, I've noticed that I do have to practice to hit the right one. The Eagle and the Kung both have three key stations, shall we say. I'm gonna show you on the Kung. You have the double key for your right little finger that's for your F and F sharp. And then the key to go down to low E is over here for your left little finger. Now, as I own both an Eagle and a Mollenhauer Modern, I have both of the systems. Do I prefer one over the other? Not really. The they come in handy in different situations. I notice for jumps, it's a bit easier to have the E key on my left hand side because that's obviously a lot easier to feel. I noticed for fast passages, it's a bit easy, easier to have it on the right hand side because that finger is used to it. To be honest, it's apples and oranges. And then we have another key up here at the top that you're manipulating with the base of your left index finger. And this is a piano key, a pianissimo key. That means you use it to play softer. And it is also used to tune some of the higher third octave notes. Whew. Are you ready? My right little finger has three keys for the G sharp, F sharp, and F natural. I have to reach for that a bit. And then my E again is over on my left hand side. And yes, I also have the same pianissimo key up here for my left index finger. Wow, so between the pianissimo key, the modern build and the movable block, whew, I can pretty much do any dynamic I want. Special features, the Eagle, E3 and Helder are all quite a bit heavier than your normal recorder. So they all come with these adjustable thumb rests on the back, they're padded with cork and they all have a ring so that you can even hang, hang them on your neck with a sling if you want. And on the helder, you've also got this dial on the back that you, that you can unscrew. If you wanna see more about this, head over to my video with Susie, she shows it really well. But you can also replace the top part of the recorder here with different materials. Here I've got some wood, but you can replace it with different things. Again, this changes the sound. Let's talk a bit about blending and where you would use these instruments. I'll start by saying, you can use any of these recorders anywhere you want. You don't have to listen to me. <laughs> if you want to play a Baroque recorder with your rock band, if you want to take your very modern innovation and play it in historical performance practice group, you do it, that is absolutely fine. But I can give you some guidelines. Oh, they blend very well together. I feel that the Mollenhauer Modern and the Merck Airlet have this beautiful balance between blending with your regular recorders, even your historical instruments, and your modern classical instruments. I played these with everything from piano and harp, mixed classical musicians and singers, and because they're relatively close to a normal recorder, it's actually really easy to make them sound great. Now the Eagle and the Kung E3 have a bigger, stronger sound. They are designed 
to blend with modern instruments. I've been using my eagle a lot in my rock band Jaboa. Uh, we have a drum kit, an electric guitar, and a synth iwi bass. We make a lot of noise, and yet my eagle can absolutely stand up against this. I used to play a baroque recorder and you couldn't hear a thing I was playing. And with my eagle, I'm there. And the helder? It feels like the helder can do everything, but it is a complex instrument. It will take time to master. It also has by far the highest price tag. So if you're looking for a recorder that will blend in your recorder quartet, it's probably not worth going for this one. I feel like as well as being able to hold its own in an ensemble, playing with other loud instruments, the Helder has so much potential for solo contemporary works. So if you're also doing that, you really want to go into these detailed sounds, well, you've got a whole universe here. I want to finish by reiterating, all of these recorders are excellent. I like all of them and I can imagine using them for different things. Um, if you're in the market for this, go with the one that speaks to you. If you if you feel like you just want to play a baroque recorder, that's also fine. If you are looking to order one of these, please visit the Early Music Shop website. I'll put links down below. So check out the Early Music Shop in the UK. Um, please like this video. And if you're not subscribed to Team Recorder, take a second to do so and click on the bell icon so you get notified when I post a video. Um, thanks so much to the Early Music Shop and to you for watching. And if you've got any of these recorders, please let me know your experience in the comments below. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Here's the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel and see you soon. Bye!